We live in a secular culture that does not believe in sin. That, that's very, very clear. G.K. Chesterton, the 20th century satiric wit, and uh, <clears throat> said, I find it amazing that moderns reject the doctrine of original sin when it is the only Christian doctrine that can be empirically verified. <laughs> Absolutely true. Secular culture doesn't buy it. Culture is powerful. And one of my concerns is that our secular culture has impacted us more, even in the church, than we realize. Does our church culture really understand that the problem is sin? I know we know it in our heads, but can we own it? And do we know how to talk about it? I was taking some graduate level courses in psychology at Harvard. That's why I was in, um, in the Boston area. And the professor said, I want you to break up into small groups and I want you to share your problems. And then I want you to also share how all these psychological principles we've been studying well, would help you. And so I got my small group. The honesty of these students was absolutely extraordinary. They were so open about sharing their problems. Now, they would have never said it was sin, but they were honest about owning their problems. And what was really poignant is nobody knew where to go to get help after all those psychological re uh, resolutions we had been reading. I left class that day, went across the campus, and I went to a Bible study. And I'm going to tell you something, the difference between those two groups could not have been greater. And would you like to know why? Because no one in the Bible study ever acknowledged having a problem. There was very sincere praising the Lord. They, they had a real devotion to Jesus. No one was willing to admit weakness. And I walked out of the Bible study and I said to myself, Becky, what's the difference between your secular psychology class at Harvard and your Christian Bible study? And I saw it in an instant. My secular psychology class had all the problems and none of the answers. My Christian Bible study had all the answers, but none of the problems. Do you know what it sounds like when you talk as if you have all the answers but none of the problems? It sounds like happy talk because it is a form of denial. It doesn't ring true. Now, if I had asked somebody in the study, is everything going perfect? In fact, I did ask somebody in that study. And you know what she said to me? Yes, I am walking with the Lord and there's some real victories, but I also have areas where I'm struggling. But I was afraid if I shared it, they'd think I was unspiritual. Do you know what that means? We've come to a point where some, not all of us, almost think it's a sin to admit that we're sinners. But my friends, the cross reveals the secret is out. <laughs> the cross is not subtle. The cross is saying the whole planet has a problem. So why in the world? would we tend to resist owning it? So, furthermore, if we can't own our sin, how in the world are we going to be able to communicate sin to people who don't believe? That is why we need truth. 